just a few years ago, the Los Angeles Lakers weren't the best team in LA. Pretty much since Lakers last championship, the other team in LA was making great strides toward being a championship contender. Hello everyone, I'm Purple Prince and continuing the theme of every NBA team's history, today we look at the ugly duckling of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Clippers. The Los Angeles Clippers franchise was originally founded as the Buffalo Braves in 1970. For three years, the Buffalo Braves barely cracked the 20 win mark, but with the addition of a future All Star in Bob McAdoo, the results improved greatly. Bob McAdoo led the NBA in scoring for three consecutive seasons and won the MVP in 1974 75 season. Those three seasons were the best for Buffalo Braves, and three years in a row they made the playoffs and lost in Eastern Conference semifinals every time. After losing Bob McAdoo to New York, Buffalo Braves got worse again and not only by the results. Team owner Paul Snyder, after previous failed attempts to sell the team, eventually sold it to John Y. Brown Jr., the owner of Kentucky Colonials, who completely decimated team's roster, traded away the best players and then traded franchise ownership. To Celtics owner Irv Levin, the team in Buffalo was done. In 1978, it was already San Diego Clippers, and with an all-NBA player in World B3, they managed to win 43 games, which wasn't enough to get in the playoffs. After the first somewhat successful season, Clippers got much worse as the time went by. They hit rock bottom in 1981-82 season, winning just 15 games. Levin sold the team to Los Angeles real estate developer, Donald Sterling, for $12.5 million. And despite adding Bill Walton to the mix of players, they could only win 25 and 30 games the next two seasons. The damage was done. Home game attendance was dreadful, averaging just over 4,000 fans per game, and Sterling convinced the NBA in allowing to relocate the team to Los Angeles. The Clippers were moved north to Los Angeles, but didn't get much better. They did have some good veteran players, but unfortunately they were unlucky when it came to injuries. Things got so bad that in 1986-1987 season, Clippers managed to win just 12 games, which at that time was the second worst season of all time. There was no place to sink further, so next season they improved to 17 wins, and the season after that to 21 wins. After trading for Ron Harper, things improved, and they got much better when the team decided to hire recently fired coach Larry Brown. Larry Brown got the team to the playoffs for two straight seasons. Both times Clippers went out in the first round, and the team made its coaching change. Bob Weiss won only 27 games. Four seasons with Bill Fitch as the head coach were as unstable as it gets, winning 27, 17, 29 and 36 games respectively. The worst coach in NBA history, Chris Ford, then won 9 games in a lockout season, and after winning just 11 of 45 games in the 1999-2000 season, he was finally replaced. The first decade of the 21st century wasn't very good for the team as well. After three seasons with no success, Alvin Gentry was fired, and once the next season rolled around, Mike Dunleavy Sr. was coaching the team. For the first three seasons, the team saw improvements, but then it fell in a hole once again. To be fair, the team just didn't have any good players whatsoever. Yes, Elton Brand was there and he was good, but other options were a young Chris Kamen, Vladimir Radmanovic and a 36-year-old Sam Castle. Just not good enough. Clippers also drafted one of the biggest draft busts in NBA history, Michael Oluwakandi, who failed to improve and didn't help the Clippers at all. The second decade of the 21st century finally brought some success to the team. Vinny Del Negro was the new coach of Los Angeles Clippers. All the bad results were in the past and Clippers had some good young and up-and-coming players in Blake Griffin, Eric Gordon, Eric Bledsoe and DeAndre Jordan, as well as some solid veterans in Mo Williams, Baron Davis and Randy Foy. The first season with Vinny Del Negro as head coach wasn't a success, but still, the Clippers were 11 games better. Next season was great. Thanks to the arrival of Chris Paul, Clippers were contenders. In 2011-2012 season, Clippers as a team improved quite a bit and finally were in the playoffs again. In seven games, Clippers managed to beat the Memphis Grizzlies, but in the second round they were dominated by the Spurs, 0-4 in the series. The good news were that Chris Paul was a Clipper, he was in his prime, and with Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, they made up for their own big three, which was a perennial playoff contender. 
and 2012-13 season, Clippers were one of the best teams in the league. They finished with 56 wins, which was the 5th best mark in the league. The season for Clippers though ended much earlier than expected. A loss in the first round series against Memphis Grizzlies. But it's not just that they lost, it's how they lost. They were up 2-0 and then lost 4 games in a row and got eliminated. The front office of Clippers chose to not renew Vinny Del Negro's contract. In a trade, they acquired coach Doc Rivers from Boston Celtics. The summer of 2013 was very busy, as Clippers really overhauled their roster. They traded away Karan Butler and Eric Bledsoe, re-signed Chris Paul and acquired JJ Redick, Antoine Jameson and Jared Dudley. The 2013-2014 regular season was full of joy for the Clippers fans. They had their best record in franchise history, winning 57 games. They beat Los Angeles Lakers by 48 points, which was the biggest victory in franchise history, and they had the third best record in the league. Clippers playoffs started with controversy, as the team owner Donald Sterling was heard on tape using racial slurs. Just four days later, Donald Sterling was banned for life from the organization and fined $2.5 million. NBA pretty much pushed Sterling to sell the team, and eventually the team got sold to Steve Ballmer. In the midst of all of this were Clippers players, having the best season ever. In the first round of the playoffs, they beat Golden State Warriors in seven games but in semi-finals lost to OKC in 6 games. Disappointment. Next year, 56 wins, again lost in the semis in the playoffs. After that, 2 seasons of 50 plus wins and exit in the first round of the playoffs. Lob City was fun while it lasted, but last year it ended. The relationship between Griffin, Paul and Doc Rivers had been brewing for a while now and it all ended in a Chris Paul trade to Houston Rockets. Without their superstar and best players, Clippers slip. Blake Griffin got the big money contract but struggled with injuries and got traded mid-season to Detroit Pistons. Clippers didn't make the playoffs and now DeAndre Jordan left the team as well in the free agency. So what now? Clippers have no all-stars. They have some solid but overpaid players and that's pretty much it. To tell you the truth, I don't even know what the future looks like for the Clippers. They hired Jerry West which is always a good thing if you want to build a team. Just as Golden State Warriors. But next season, pretty much is a wash. They do say that they will get Kawhi Leonard next year. That's gonna be a big boost if it happens, but for now, the LA Clippers are still the ugly duckling of LA. What do you think? What the future holds for the Clippers? Leave a comment below, like this video, and subscribe for future NBA content. Thanks for watching. This was Purple Prince, and I'm out. Stop getting paper, ayy, can't stop rolling papers, ayy, LSD and coca, ayy, live la vida loca, ayy, she gon' feed me grapes, ayy, we all go on dates, ayy.